Hi all, in this video, let's learn why and how to use the CSS preprocessors. We know we use CSS for styling the web applications and web pages. With this CSS style sheets, what happens is if the application in increases larger, larger, then it becomes complex to maintain the CSS style sheets. So that's the reason it's better to move to CSS preprocessors. Let's understand why we need to use this CSS preprocessors, how it helps us. So there are a couple of CSS preprocessors in the market. So like um, SAS, LESS, and Post CSS, and Stylus. So there are few more uh, CSS preprocessors there in the market. Uh, I will uh, do a video uh, comparing the three differences in the in upcoming videos. But to this video, so I will explain you the reasons why we need to choose a CSS preprocessor. The first reason is it is easier to maintain the code. For example, if you write a piece of code, something like this. Okay, it means like you could able to define the variables in the CSS code. Okay, if you are not defining the variables, it's like uh, it, uh, the CSS code becomes larger and larger and larger, and you need to change the same value again and again in your code base. For example, the commonly used things you can put that in a variable like primary color here, and you can put some color here, and you can reuse this variable whenever it is needed. And if you in future, if you wanted to change that value. Just you can change that value here. That's it. That's enough. Everything would be modified. So this is easy to maintain. So all the variables would be declared here. You will have a clear understanding what all the variables and what variable you can use. And uh, for example, if you have some pixels, a standard body font size as a 16. Okay. You can also do the mathematical manipulations as well by defining that in the variables. Okay. So when you write the code, something like this. And when you compile this, it comes, it becomes something like this. The variables would be replaced with the actual values. Okay, there would be one step. So before learning all the reasons of why we need to use CSS preprocessors, one important thing we need to understand is browsers will only understand CSS code, plain CSS code. It can't understand the SAS. Okay, not just SAS, any of the CSS preprocessor code, it can't understand like less code or post CSS or SAS. So they need to have some compiler. Okay, This SAS compiler will compile this piece of code into plain CSS so that the browser can understand that code base. This is the extra step we need to do when you choose the CSS preprocessors. Okay, that's the main point. And the first usage is like you can easily maintain the code base with, by using the variables like this. Okay, and the second point is you no need to repeat yourself. It's like uh, it follows the dry principle. It means don't repeat yourself. What does it mean? So for example, you have a style, you have a class, you have defined some properties, another class, and you have defined some properties. If you see most of the properties looks same, okay, then what you can do. So instead of repeating the code base like this, just you can use at the rate extension, at the rate extend. So then what happens? It's going to inherit all these properties. Apart from this, you can just override whatever the value you want. So this is like you're not repeating the same code again. You're making use of something is already there. You are just inheriting that with the at, at the rate extend direct. Okay. Similarly, you also have the at the rate import. So these two follows the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. At the rate import instance. So you can write the CSS, the common CSS colors, themes, and fonts, uh, all these things you can write in a common CSS files, and you can import that in your CSS, in your SAS file, and you can use this. So this is like an inheriting that CSS file and making use of that. In this way, you're not repeating the code. It means like the redundancy of the code, you're reducing the, redund like, uh, you're reducing the code base, okay? And it's more readable. And uh, organizing the CSS code. For example, so if you, you see, uh, in general, we'll write CSS code like this. If you have a navigation bar, you'll write a CSS like this nav bar, and under that, the under unordered list will be uh, styled like this. List item will be styled like this. Anchor tag would be styled like this. If you have a nav bar, this is how we usually write with the CSS. But with the SAS, you you can write, you can nest your CSS code something like this. See, all this U L L I N A, these elements are nested in the nav element, and you can see. This is how it is clearly like an HTML visual hierarchical structure. It was very more readable. It was more organized and more readable. You can easily identify what is the error. 
you can easily identify, you can easily scale the things if you have organized your CSS code in such a way. So this is how uh, this was like, this is the concept of nesting. So this is also one of the good reason we can choose CSS preprocessor. So coming to the another reason we have mix in. So this is uh, looks something like a function. So how to declare a mix in. So just use at the rate mix in and the name of the mix. -in. This looks at something like a function and this is like a function parameter. Here if we are using a variable and we are passing this dark gray color, okay? And a, a few of the properties like this. So these variables would be replaced here inside this function, okay? So the beauty of this is like you, you're reducing the number of lines of code you're writing and you are dynamically, you can pass the values to this mix in whatever the way you want. So for example, if the dot info, like you wanted to, you have info error and success messages. So for the info, just you will call this theme. Okay, how to use this mix in? Just use at the rate include and the name of the mix in. It's like you're calling this function. It looks something like that. Okay, this is how you need to use it. So now what happens, how it appears, so how it compiles into plain CSS. Let me show it the right side. So it compiles something like this, okay? That means like every every code base would be replaced here with the dark gray, including this RGBA, okay? So for example, if you wanted to modify some color instead of dark gray, so just send that variable. So for the alert, you have included and calling this mix in and you are passing some other va value, okay? This is how, this, uh, this value would be passed in the place of the dark gray. You can see here, dark red was passed. So like that, you can use this, okay? This is like mixing. This is a, another feature of CSS preprocess. More or less, all the CSS preprocessors will have all these features, will have their own compilers to compile them, okay? And coming to the another feature, like it ha it can have some operations. It can do some operations like mathematical operations as well. So you can three, are three uh, em into 1.5. So you can see it results into 4.5 em, okay? So don't mix the C uh, CSS units here. You can do this type of mathematical operations as well, but don't mix the CSS units, like don't use pixel plus and don't use another one. Like don't use a pixel with the rems, pixel with percentages, don't use that, but you can use this mathematical operations like plus into as well. Okay, that is the one more. And uh, apart from all these five reasons, you can use if statements, first statements. So that becomes a bit more logical. You are including the code base in the CSS as well. Okay, that really gives a more advantage for us to maintain the CSS code. And uh, it may, we can make this as an organized, readable and scalable code. So my suggestion is like try to pick any of the CSS preprocessors and try to use them in your next projects. So coming to how to use them, how to understand these things. So all these CSS preprocessors have their playground, okay? If you just wanted to explore what topic is what, what concept is what, just go to their websites and you can have the playgrounds here for SATs and this is for the less, okay? You can playground, uh, you can just understand the topics. This is the one way to explore this CSS preprocessors. And the second way, so if you are using the create react app. So you'll be having an app.css, all the files would be CSS. If you're using a react application with the create react app, it will have by default the SAS compiler, just to modify the CSS, this name to the SAS, that's it. It will work as is. You can use all the features of the SAS here. If you're using create react app, if you're using any of the Webpack configured application, whether it could be Angular, Vue, or React.js, then in the Webpack configuration, so you need to add this piece of code. This is a rule you are going to add, and you need to install these loaders, style loader, CSS loader, and SAS loader. These three needs to be installed as a dev dependency, and then you can use this here. You can add this uh, test and test, and you need to mention that. Like uh, this is the extension of the files. It's like CSS or SAS or uh, SCSS, okay? All these uh, type of files, we are uh, giving this uh, one, okay? Like style loader, CSS loader, and SAS loader. So these will help us to compile them uh, and make the code bundled and understandable by the browser. And if you're not using any of the Webpack or a Create React app, if you want to just using a single application, so you, you also can use this NPM install SAS, okay? Once if you install the SAS, SAS, and you can write uh, the style sheet names, index.css, uh, this is an input file, and you can give index.sas. So it's it means like you are compiling, you have installed the SAS dependency, and now you're 
compiling the SAS. Which file you want to compile? This is a SAS contained file. Okay, you want to compile this to the normal CSS file. So you can do something like this. And in the index.html page, you need to refer to the index.css. This is because browser only understands the index.css file, right? So that is the reason you need to point this output file. Okay, and also you can add hyphen f and watch so that whatever you change in this CSS file that was automatically watching and it is automatically compiled into the CSS which you have already linked into your HTML page so that it works seamlessly. So these are the different ways you can uh, use the CSS preprocessors and these are the different like these are the different features why we need to use the CSS preprocess. Give a try for this. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe the channel. Thank you.